Alright everybody, we've got uh, the racks finished up, we've got everything grinded down nice and smooth, all the welds, we've got everything filled in really good. Um, so then what we did is we rubbed everything down with some acetone to kind of clean everything up really nice. Uh, so there's not any gritty stuff left over from the welds. Um, so now that it's clean, we're going to start the priming. So I'm going to start priming uh, a coat on, we'll let it dry for a while, and we'll could have probably put two, maybe three coats on before we start putting the black on. We're going to go with matte black, but uh, we're excited, it's going to look good. So I'm going to get started on this while Del Factor's cleaning up the shop, and then we're going to probably start working on the chain and sprockets while this is drying up. So I'm going to start cranking on this, and we'll keep going. See how I do that, Mr. Duff Factor? You get nice at it. Slow. You can switch slow. hands, you can turn it upside down, <laughs> shake it. Look, no hands. You know, I don't even have to look at it. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Uh, welcome back down. Uh, we just uh, kind of cleaned this place up a little bit. We had uh, slag and weld stuff and grind stuff all over and we just turned the bike around so you guys can kind of see it. Uh, right now we're in process of uh, priming uh, the, the racks, getting them ready for paint. So while that's all happening, uh, we want to bring you to a new episode. Uh, this episode has to do with uh, drive line, drive train stuff. And uh, as we were inspecting uh, Everide's bike, we started to notice that uh, his uh, sprockets are pretty well had. So we're assuming that his chain been informally tested. The way you test it is you can measure from a certain number of lengths based on uh, what the manual says. But uh, when we saw the sprockets worn out, we decided, you know what, got to replace the chain too. And ideally, you don't really want to just replace the sprocket or the sprocket or, and the chain or the chain only. Uh, ideally to get longevity you want to replace everything. So uh, I don't know if you can kind of hone in a little bit but you can see um, on his uh, sprocket all of these teeth are uh, pointed forward. They, they have a slant forward from, from uh, just the workload on it and uh, this is the mark that uh, Mrs. Duff Actor put down here. I was at work one day and called to ask her to count the teeth for me. And so she came down and marked it and counted. And this is a 47 tooth rear sprocket. Um, and uh, you can kind of see that the teeth are pointed forward. And, and actually, uh, we noticed that the front sprocket, which is much more rare to have the, uh, the teeth messed up on that. It does happen after a lot of miles, but um, and it may be a little hard to see now that I've kind of pulled this off, but you can kind of see some wear and some bending of the teeth. This one in particular forward, this one too. And uh, what we don't want to have happen is have the teeth break off like a two-bit meth whore. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny, Tyler. Two-bit meth whore. <laughs> you know how their teeth fall out, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do, or what we have done, is we thought about this long and hard and we, we got him a new uh, Renthal front sprocket. Now the stock teeth on this bike is a 15 tooth front sprocket according to everything that we found. And uh, we counted the teeth on Everides and he has a 14 tooth front sprocket which lowers the gear ratio, gives a little bit more torque down low. So we're simply replacing the front sprocket with the same tooth count that he had originally which is a 14 tooth. So we've got a Renthal sprocket that we're going to put on there for you, buddy. And then uh, we've got you a new chain. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes when you're dealing with me, i got a little bit of pigment in me that causes me to have some bling factor problems. How do you like the gold grills, baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got a gold chain. You go with your black bike. Sorry, I did the same thing on my bike, my chopper. And uh, but this is a nice uh, 520 O-ring chain um, that we're excited to, to put on. Uh, we've got uh, also 
after careful consideration, Everide, we hope you like it, um, we decided to get an Outlaw Racing Products rear sprocket. Now, um, the thing about this sprocket is this one has a 47 tooth rear sprocket. Um, we thought because we're adding racks, maybe more weight, that it might be good to have just a little bit more gear, gear ratio. So we actually went with a 48 instead of a 47. It's just one tooth. Uh, yeah, you're going to lose just a little bit of top end, but not radically so. So uh, we hope you're okay with that. So we're going to put a 48 on the rear, got a 14 on the front. We're going to put the new chain on, get everything adjusted. It's going to need some wear in time. And then uh, the back end of this bike will be done. Um, we've got a few other things we need to do. Uh, put the hardware on the tank, get it cleaned out, and uh, wait for the racks to dry and basically uh, start installing stuff. We're still waiting for the throttle position sensor to come. It's supposed to be here in about five days. And then uh, I think we're going to be ready to start setting the bike up for them, which will be uh, a lot of fun getting the suspension set up. So stay tuned, folks. We're going to swap all this stuff out, and then we'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. Okay, uh, we've got this rear tire off getting ready to replace the seals. We wanted to point out how not to put your seals in. <laughs> Now they might have done this for a reason. They might have noticed that that the uh, that this part was worn out, and they wanted to put the seal on a new area. It's really worn. But what they did, if you can see, there's a spring on this outside of the seal. They put the seal in backwards. Okay, it's supposed to go the other way with this concave side inward, um, and it's the same on both sides. So it might have been intentional. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, we've got new pieces, so we're going to make sure and clean this out real well and uh, put the seals in the correct way with some new grease in there and uh, put these new pieces in. So uh, just want to point that out. Those are in backwards. Usually that's okay, but now with bikes. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the new piece we're going to put on. There's the old piece. See the old ruts in that thing that are rubbed in there? There's the new one, nice and shiny. That's what we like. We like nice and shiny. Just to get dirty. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've got the new 48 tooth sprocket on. Um, we've also got his new Bling Factor gold O ring chain. We've got the Renthal sprocket on the front. And we don't have the cover back on yet. We're going to put that on in just a minute. But uh, the chain was just barely long enough. And uh, after it stretches a little bit, it'll probably need to be adjusted again. But uh, we've got just enough adjustment in there now for him to get started with. And I like it. I like it. It all looks really good. Ready to go. Utah Backcountry Discovery Route approved. Is it uh, Rojo Neck approved? Uh, yeah, yeah. If it was black, it'd be better, right? Yeah. <laughs> You had to hesitate there for a little bit. The bling factor won out on this one. So we're going to put that front cover on and uh, probably start working on the tank, throw another coat of primer on the racks, and uh, we'll be good.
is such a bitch. Hey everybody, hey, uh, we've got this bike back together again, and uh, everything's working good. We still haven't done the throttle position sensor yet, but of course it runs without it. Um, it's uh, sounding really good, idling good. Ty's got some gyro going, so I want you to just listen to it for a second here, just to kind of wet your whistle there, ever right? I can't hear anything now. <laughs>